What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and as always, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. And today, I bring to you the review for Prey from Arcane Studios and published by Bethesda. Let's see if Prey has successfully extracted excellence from the blood and sweat DNA samples of its cluttered beginnings when bounty hunter protagonists suddenly got replaced by someone that works perfectly for any fans who like their scientists Freeman. Or has it suffered the fate of alien colonial marines, a fitful display of starts and stops and redos that at this point is so bad, many gamers hope it's just one giant mass hallucination, a little bit like Sinbad in that Shazam movie he was never in. Prey is going to be out May 5th, on PC, Xbox One, and PS4. As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Prey. Massive Wrenches, the first game sponsored by Post-It, and someone spelling Half-Life 3 P-R-E-Y. Graphics are first. Well, luckily I got to spend my time with all three versions, beating it on the Xbox One, and then spending a good deal of time today testing it on the PS4 and PC. And I have to say, surprisingly enough, regardless of platform, Prey looks really good. No, seriously, from start to finish. And it's not just about the excellence of textures or poly count here. Much of it, like the titles folks are going to compare this to, is about its level design, not diving into the awe-inspiring vistas of, let's say, floating circuses gone wrong like Bioshock Infinity, nor really going true horror like, say, Dead Space. But instead, you can sort of imagine the developers putting themselves firmly in the center of a room and then basically dragging their foot around in a circle, yelling, this space is mine right here. Now, it starts with the almost mirror's edge-like look to the initial interior spaces. They're clean, efficient, cut from the world like anything organic is considered wholly undesired. Here, there is a very specific reason for this, and it's a Spartan presentation, both as a visual break from the later sections, but also as your one limited reminder of what was. Prey holds true to two ideals throughout. Clean design mixed with mysterious circumstances. And while I can't spoil much, I can say that the first time you realize an entire area is like a massive circular hub for secretive travel, skipping vast sections once you initially unlock them, the tangible echoes of Dark Souls and its serpentine level design are going to be instantly noticed by a lot of gamers. But what's excellent here, at least to me, is the secrets and the switchbacks and the designs and how they're done. It's not the grandiose, oh, you got to the end of the level. Instead, here it's a reflection of the current state of the location it's in. It makes sense within the actual title. And I can only say this without spoiling things, but if you enter a room and it's got two exits, there's a good chance that with experimentation, many of them will have three or four exits, that they themselves will go off into their own locations, unlocking more side quests or information continually as you discover them texture work is excellent across the board. It's very well done with a couple low detail textures in specific locations where I think most folks probably wouldn't look anyway. Now, sadly, there are a couple where we would look, but overall, a high degree of effort in showing the best face of the game at any one time. But to me personally, it's the use of the effects and the effects themselves that absolutely began to sort of astound me as I worked through, especially the later half of Prey. From the wickwire weird essence that floats around in an experiment's brood chamber that actually made me physically hold my breath to that shifting and twisting turbulent warping that the enemies perform terrassing around the level like you're seeing how the slender man moves whenever you're not looking it's all done so damned well and almost no effect here is done for no reason allowing for visually clean areas to remain so and then when you pop out into your space garden you can sit back and revel in that atmospheric difference or when it comes to weapons, like when you spool up your stun gun, you can still make out all the designs of its workings, even as it concentrates more energy than those eyes of the storm you'd buy at Radio Shack. Now, while the humans are about the status quo, I think, with the expected detail here and there, the enemies can be a bit of a letdown, but luckily I think that's going to be subjective, so I'll give you the reasons why I think so. For me, throughout... The game's highlight was fighting mimics, especially when there are more than one. It's like fighting off a Half-Life head crab hopped up on an entire Warwick Davis worth of cocaine. They are difficult to pin down, and their ability to flip behind you and change into one of an assortment of random items has you consistently thinking, was that friggin' cup there a second ago? Sadly, the other enemies, at least for me, are a little bit hit and miss, and there is no big daddy or even little sister in their Colossus and Innocence corrupted co-op that can tag team into your psyche like those two characters did. Though I would say later on, I feel like some of the best design work actually came back out. Now, when it comes to performance, the Xbox One is 900p at 30fps, PS4 is 1080p at 30fps, and of course, PC is pretty much any P at whatever you want as long as you can throw some cash at it. Even the older i7-920 paired with a 970 was getting rock-solid 60 frames per second at 1440p with just a couple changes to the settings and very little in the way of the technical mess that many experienced by some folks with Dishonored 2. Now, much of that's because it's a totally different engine, and I think that shows. 
As a package, this is a title that is uniformly excellent. It really is about its artistic leanings, met out with the technology that they've got, and I think they do a really good job. Sound, music, and voice. Final Science Critical. What's that thing doing in there, huh? Damn it, show me some mercy, you sick son of a bitch! This is the Great Circle. Don't let them do this to you. And of course, when it comes to audio, sound's the first category here. For the most part, this is excellent. While some of the sound and music issues that remain from the demo are here and noticeable, it does look like some work was done to level things out a bit. And the first time you enter a zero gravity zone, trying to turbo boost through a chamber filled with all these mysterious devices and a more mysterious countdown, all to retrieve a floating body of a fellow scientist. The overall environmental and directional sound absolutely aid in solidifying that experience as being terrifying. And here also the game's subtle sound hints aid gamers, especially when you decide to dive into the deeper end of the high difficulties. I can promise you, the first time some pans drop behind you or some boxes fall off a pile just as you pass them, the game's use of incidental audio is stellar enough that you will most likely search through that area by using your seeing eye gun. When it comes to weapons and skills and abilities, for the most part they're excellent and special notice has to be given to the spool up sounds of various weapons and enemies in the game where it sounds like every enemy in the level's powering up some kind of fireball from Street Fighter and is just waiting for someone to stick their head out. Sadly, it's not all perfect though. Once again, shotguns are still sort of woefully lacking in the low end here where the sound is there but the force and feel really isn't and it's just overall a bit lackluster. But the most egregious problem, and it happened to me on two separate platforms, is randomly, with no goddamn rhyme or reason, the cutscene audio was at least 10 times louder than the rest of the game. Remember those ads that are playing in your browser? Congratulations, you want a Wii? It's pretty much like that times a thousand. As a package, when it comes to sound, I'm pretty happy, but there's a couple issues here and there. Music. So this is once again Mick Gordon. Now he did the Doom soundtrack, and of course here we have a far less run and gun feel, and for the most part, a more moody excellence. But there are times where I swear you could hear him chomping at the bit. It's like sort of giving someone a goddamn dragster and then super gluing a piece of friggin' wood under the gas pedal. So when enemies show up or poignant things happen, the music sometimes seems overly powerful, resulting, as folks had described in the demo, threads as moments where they knew bad guys were there far before they ever should have and it sort of ruined some of the experience. Now the issue here is absolutely cleaned up but I still sometimes found myself looking at a toolbox and wondering why it was so amazing because the music had suddenly turned itself to 11. Mick's continued use of discordant and sort of puzzling themes continues to delight me and when it's working the music adds another layer onto the game with moments of gnashy warbling samples playing as you listen to the sinister teleportations of enemies in the next room and you get that moment and that feeling every single time pretty well done except for a couple little issues here and there voice so this is pretty good from the side characters and men and women who are alive or dead and you're listening to them via the game's audio logs all delivering data about what occurred or what will occur as you progress deeper into the story also, a special kudo to the voice actor who handled a specific prisoner. The dichotomy between his words and his actions, or the actions I found out about, was brilliant. It's not overstated nor undercooked, and in many ways it reflects how Prey is actually handled from a development standpoint. I like that kind of interaction. It was very well done. Gameplay. So a bit about Prey's story, as spoiler-free as I can make it. You start out as Gordon Freeman style, getting ready for work for a mysterious project and learning the small idiosyncrasies of the game's world interactivity in your apartment, which for the most part is simply explained by one word, everything. Well, just about everything is interactive, and that's a damn testament to the gameplay itself because that starts to unfold later as you're throwing a thermos to distract supposedly highly advanced life forms in a tactic that's not much removed from pointing out and saying, look over there. Now, almost instantly shit hits the fan and you begin into the game proper. You end up on a space station, possibly inhabited by an alien parasite, and are soon wrapped up into a no-win situation of die quick or die slow. And that's where Prey just sort of friggin' lets loose. As the main character, you have various skills, some of them unfolding as you study items around the game world, others having previous skill requirements, and even more. The typical one-two punch of binary choices we get a lot of times, or maybe even three choices, spreads itself out here with more than five skill trees, all with their own requirements and bonuses, 
all of them impacting the story, how the world interacts with you, but most importantly, how you interact with it. And that's all I can say. It is wonderful stuff. And the mysterious, almost Bioshock style warning you get about watching out what powers you choose isn't the only bit of advice you better take to heart because without a shadow of a doubt, going through an area with one set of skills and then going through it again with either others or with your skills more powerful can actually change how the entire locations feel. And that interactivity continues with the ability to recycle everything in the game by throwing it into a giant version of Mr. Fusion from the DeLorean and Back to the Future and it spits out chunks of the basic elements like organic material and so forth for use in the game's crafting machines. It's all very slick and it feels perfectly entwined in the narrative. You also have upgrades for your suit or a scope that you get later in the game, changing things like special abilities or attacks that give you bonuses or maybe being able to scan items quicker in the game world. Now, when it comes to the weapons themselves, you can upgrade them with items you find around the station to do more damage, take less ammo, shoot farther, though only if your level is high enough with each weapon type connected to its requisite skill. With all these tools, the game's got to have to keep you going, and it does so through a hub world design, with you able to go most anywhere if you can find the information, and a lot of places not locked off as much with story, but instead with data. Loading occurs when you move from major locations, and while it's a bit long, it was mostly unnoticed. Now, when it comes to game length, this is going to be up in the air. As I said before, the game is going to take some people at least 14 hours if you play on normal difficulty and much, much more if you do many of the side quests, all directly connected to the main story and plot. I mean, even from the start, a couple short minutes in, you begin to get side quests, which have you following a futuristic Hansel and Gretel candy trail of audio and written hints as you trek halfway across the station to Robert Stack, another unsolved mystery. Or you can just stick to the main story proper, quickly beginning to realize that there were monsters here before the aliens ever showed up, and really it's that duality of the situation that begins to become the major stepping stone and hurdle for you to get across. Now, you might be going, okay, so it's a bit Bioshock, a bit System Shock, and maybe even a bit Dishonored, and yeah, sort of, but that's like saying that a Chinese military parade is just a bunch of folks celebrating Leg Day. Parade delights in its interweaving of narrative throughout the entire tale, and certainly brings Fair comparisons to those games, but for me, in many ways, and rather forcibly, the game reminds me of System Shock 2, with a great reversal of fortune within the story's main plot that just really had me going. And like Bioshock's story, which elevated the knowledge that power can harm no matter how you gain it, Prey doubles back on itself as you begin to find out that not all is right in the world, but that may be what's actually right about the world now. It is awesome stuff. Now, aside from that, one second you might be jetpacking through the twisted confines of a machine shop that looks like the crotch of someone's pants that bent down too fast, or sneaking through a scientist's lab and leaping through windows on the goal of just staying out of range of an alien's notice. It doesn't matter whether you're up close and personal killing with a giant wrench or shooting them far and distant. It just works the way the skills and the weapons combine together. It is great. And let's talk a little bit about Fun Factor. I had a blast. Listen. Sometimes a game has an enemy with a tank of propane on his back, and guess what? I bet he's immune to fire. It's that sort of show and tell of instant gaminess that sometimes hurts titles, but not so with Prey, at least at first, until you study them. You have to investigate and scan enemies to find their weaknesses, and they come in groups, so that EMP pulse that brings down the mumbling scientist robot may do nothing to the mimic leaping Lenny Poffo style off a bag of space crumpets into your face right next to him. And overall, across all the difficulties, the AI worked really well. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. This is absolutely a buy. It's not the most visually striking, but overall it looks amazing. And especially when you consider and compare it to maybe underwater cities or those floating in the sky. But Prey feels like a return to System Shock with some Deus Ex thrown in, where maybe Dishonored had you feeling like a god slicing dudes heads off and you sliding into the darkness. Prey is far more about the cerebral gameplay. And the deeper you dive into this, the deeper you pay attention to the shit that's going on, for example, in the first 40 minutes, there is something that most folks will not pick up on at all. But by the end of the game, I felt like it had to be one of the best examples of plot threads flowing unbroken but not undisguised through a game in years. So as always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Maybe check out Twitter or Patreon. If you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.